Again, good evening and welcome everyone to tonight's virtual community meeting um, for the Peabody Elementary School. This meeting is being held um, because, uh, being held in conjunction with the Bond 2020 program that will fund a new replacement campus for Peabody Elementary. If you're joining us on Facebook, we are broadcasting on two different channels. One, we're happy to see everyone joining us here on our Zoom call. And if you're in the Zoom call, you'll be able, there'll be a time where we can go off mute and ask your questions. Or also you can submit your questions using the chat feature. And by raising your hand, you can see an interaction button. If you enter, raise your hand on the reactions button, we can actually let you go off mute and make your comment there. Or you can submit any questions or comments you have in the chat room. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, we welcome you and encourage you to submit your comments, questions, and concerns um, and participate and participate um, just in the chat room making comments on Facebook. We will share those live during the meeting so you will have the opportunity to participate as well. With that being said, I'm going to turn, um, it's my pleasure this evening to, I'm going to pause at this moment for our interpreter to give instructions on how to participate in Spanish. Go ahead. Hola, buenas noches a todos. Si desea escuchar esta reunión en español, selecciona la opción en español en la parte derecha inferior de la pantalla, lo que es el icono del mundo. La opción en español no es compatible con el Chromebook. Le recomiendo entrar a la reunión utilizando su teléfono celular, computadora PC, iPad o tableta. Gracias. Thank you so much. So with that being said, we're so excited to have you participate in this meeting about the new um, Peabody Elementary School. And what better way to kick off the meeting than hearing from the amazing principal of one of our most fantastic campuses, um, Principal Rogers Hall, it's your turn now. You're still on mute, there we go. Thank you so much and good evening, everyone. Hello to the members of the community, Trustee Mackey, so good to see you. Peabody faculty and staff, I see you here representing. Thank you to all the district members, everybody who's here to make this event possible. I am the proud principal of Peabody Elementary School and I am beyond thrilled about hearing the next steps of our new school uh, because I know our chargers certainly deserve nothing but the best. I am positive that I'm speaking not only for myself but for all the stakeholders at Peabody. And with that, I will turn things over to Trustee Mackey, I believe. Yes. Good evening. Thank you, Principal Rogers Hall. Glad to be here. My name is Ben Mackey. I serve as the trustee for District 7, which includes George Peabody Elementary School. Um, and I am just excited to have been here when the process kicked off, excited to see where we're up to, and just want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make sure all of the students and families and staff at Peabody have a fabulous building that they can be proud of and get excited. In. So excited for this. And I'm always standing by to meet with anyone or talk with anyone afterwards. And I'll put my information in the chat for everyone here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Principal Rogers Hall, for the work that you do, not just today, but every day, especially during um, our, these difficult times. But we thank you for what you're doing to make sure that our um, young learners at Peabody are having a wonderful educational experience. And thank you as well, um, for President Mackey for joining us tonight and for the work that you do every day as an educator to ensure that we have quality education at the Dallas ISD is indeed the premier urban um, district in the nation. With that being said, Bond 2020 is the largest bond in the history of the state of Texas. We're doing a lot and, and impacting many communities across Dallas ISD. These efforts are being led by none other than our Deputy Chief of Bond and Construction Services, Brent Alfred. But Mr. Alfred, if you would go ahead and give instructions and set the tone for tonight's meeting. Hey, thank you, Ms. Bell, and thank you, uh, Peabody community, and Happy New Year. Uh, I'm proud that you guys are sticking with us through this journey. Uh, you know, we love to build and, and uh, we're in the design process at the moment. Uh, we're thinking big and we want to make sure we're keeping these ideas consistent throughout uh, the, the project. Uh, I have Terry Hall. He's with um, Flugel Architects. Uh, we prepared a great presentation for you guys. And if you have any questions at the end, uh, please let us know. So, Terry, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Alfred. Appreciate the uh, introduction, the opportunity tonight to present uh, to the community representing uh, Peabody Elementary School. 
So wanted to uh, take this time to review uh, our conceptual design process that we have gone through. I'd show you some images and, and some of the early work we had done. We looked at a couple of options. And so what we're uh, bringing our focus tonight on is the uh, option that was designed, decided last time in our early conversations, just looking, focusing on uh, the option that we title the hearth. You'll see more about that uh, in a moment. So uh, with that, we wanted to, our, our agenda is gonna be is to review the guiding principles, what the project is about, what are the kind of those things that are important that need to be implemented into the design. Uh, and then we're gonna look at the, the design uh, inspiration and the site constraints. This is a tight site. Uh, it's right at three acres. So uh, it is a tight site. So there's gonna be some real opportunities of how, to, how we make that work. So we're gonna show you uh, some opportunities that'll come there. And then we will show you the, uh, the concept itself. So as we look at the guiding principles, uh, one of the things that uh, we heard that was very important is it wanted to be family centric, that Peabody uh, is a family. Uh, the culture is, is very much family or oriented. And so the building needs to support that. It also needs to be welcoming and it needs to be uh, not only welcoming that invites people in, but invites people to connect in those relationships uh, to build. Uh, one of the, the second things we wanted to do is it wanted to spark imagination that it wants to create a real energy uh, for the students to want to, uh, to explore and to learn new things. And so the building needs to support that, uh, to discover, to explore and to create. Third thing is engagement, about the, the importance of engaging uh, together, uh, both collaboratively for students, uh, but also uh, for the community uh, itself to have a place and, and be inviting to welcome that kind of interaction uh, between students, uh, between uh, community members uh, and with teachers. Again, supporting that not only the family uh, values, uh, but also uh, to engage in real productive and exciting learning. And then uh, to connect. Uh, we've talked about uh, the connection, certainly uh, to community uh, and to family, but also there's this uh, connection in and through the building and the activities that are going on. So for example, it's creating a connection to nature. So there wants to be thoughtfulness about the experience that all the people that come to be Peabody will have as they come to the building, as they approach the building, both in the drive up and in the walk up. But it also wants to have that connection uh, to nature and to the outdoors, even in the classroom. So every opportunity wherever possible is to have connection to the outdoors, whether that is a, uh, a, a close connection physically to go outside or whether it's views to the outside. The opportunity to get that natural daylight into a space just makes it more relaxing, helps to increase the energy in the space, helps to create imagination, and the nature has a lot to teach uh, here on this campus, just as well as what goes on in the classroom. And so uh, with those as a guiding principles, we wanna to talk to you about some of the inspiration uh, and constraints about the site uh, that help uh, to drive the design. So uh, Alex, if you wouldn't mind uh, walking us through that. Yeah, for sure. And I'll be uh, perhaps uh, leaning on, on both uh, Terry and Mike for some additional uh, pointers as we talk about the site, as well as the design in general. Um, so the, the first design driver for us was certainly the uh, the neighborhood and and the mix of uh, uh, in the community using using the neighborhood and so that was very important how uh, how colorful and lively really that area of the city is and and so coupled with with the notion of that uh, teaching is about discovery so we're trying to uh, merge those two and, and create a a beautiful, engaging building. And so the first thing is to uh, 
kind of walk you through the site, uh, the challenges, opportunities, and constraints. And most of you will recognize uh, kind of the site in general. Um, and we want to point out just, uh, the, you know, the, the main circulation around the site, Graydale on the south. Uh, what was the name of the, uh, the street on the north side, Mike? I forgot the name, it's on the next slide. Yeah, I've got and, yeah. what, what is important though to, to recognize is how how tight the, the site is not only within the premise of the school uh, property but also uh, the streets uh, adjacent to the site now uh, so some of the uh, some vignettes here showing kind of the existing um, characteristics of the of the site itself uh, we see you know the side drops off on the west side uh, which uh, you know while it's tricky dealing with the site just for the drop it off offers uh, great views to the west and so these are some of the things that we're trying to uh, uh, take advantage of and so uh, just to get you guys oriented the slope of the site drops off dramatically on the west side which creates some challenges, but also some opportunities. One of them is, uh, this is the view towards the west, kind of west-northwest, and we capture uh, quite a bit of greenery. And, and so we're thinking it would be great for the building to uh, frame those views. And also without forgetting kind of the history behind the existing school, there is a, a sign uh, that, that is that predates even the existing uh, building, and so we're trying to uh, maybe bring that uh, back to uh, to good use in the new facility. Uh, here is nothing more to, to say that uh, because the site comes with setback constraints. Really, what we need uh, as as a practical building area is actually a reduction. Of, of the site. And so that's another set of constraints that, that we have to deal with. Again, just uh, uh, looking at, at the setbacks in conjunction with the, with the uh, slope of the site, you know, it, it really tells us we have very limited area to play with. And so after looking at all of that, uh, and, and certainly understanding the uh, guiding principles, we want the school to be a warm, inviting, friendly place. And so uh, we came up with the idea of creating a school around the hearth notion, which is, uh, you know, uh, with having the idea of bringing family and everybody together into a room, so to speak. Something that becomes intimate, relaxed, something where you want to, uh, you want to just be, you're not in a hurry uh, to go and come. So part of that welcoming is makes, it's a place where you want to stay, a place that sticks, if you will. And so this is just uh, volumetrically how we started to uh, digest the program and, and that program is starting to take uh, shape in, in the form of blocks. And you see here, Terry talked about earlier on about engaging the site and the outdoors. And so we are very careful about creating opportunities to, within the building, have the ability to look out. The, the next series of slides are going to show you uh, uh, how we're transforming the site and the existing school from the current condition to the new uh, to the new setup, and so what you see here is the existing school with the portables in the back, and so we're talking about uh, demolishing those first, and then uh, phase one of the of the building is going to come online. Uh, at, at this stage, uh, kids will uh, move to phase one building. And so that's going to give us an opportunity to demo uh, the uh, the other part of the building, uh, which is going to occupy uh, by phase two. 
And so here, just in terms of program and how the building works, the uh, orange portion is the academic classrooms. The uh, red is the administration offices. The blue here in the center is the library. And so we're envisioning this space as the uh, living room of the school, if you will, really the heart of, of the school. And then the green is the, the gym, which is also a um, storm shelter. So uh, this slide shows now the, the other portion, the existing portion of the school that, that will be demoed. Uh, and, that and maybe what we do is, so just to give you an idea, you'll see in a moment. So when the school opens, you probably will begin to recognize it doesn't have uh, a, a dining room and a kitchen in this phase. And that's going to be one of the things that the uh, district will implement an kind of alternative uh, serving plan uh, within the new facility until that next phase that can come on board that Alex is going to show. And then so also it'll have some temporary requirements for uh, some of the other support space uh, that you'll see as well that's going to be uh, dealt with while that's construction of that phase two is going on. Yeah, well, I'd like to take the opportunity also to point out again how how tight really the site is. As you can see at this stage, we're essentially 100% uh, site occupied. And so uh, we're trying to uh, take any advantage of little pockets here and there to create uh, nature around the building. And so moving, uh, moving forward, uh, that portion of the existing building goes away and then new building phase two comes online and basically what we have here uh, in purple is fine arts which is uh, art room and and choir and then in yellow we have uh, the cafeteria and the kitchen and so re probably remember what i told you about the views to the west side so we are creating this block uh, fairly glassy on, on this facade so we can capture those views and have the ability to, uh, to have the kids enjoy those views as, as they're having uh, lunch or if there are any community events uh, after hours so they can enjoy uh, those views as well. This is a um, conceptual uh, perspective of the building in question and so you kind of clearly see the definition of phase one, right? And then phase two uh, building growing to, towards the west. Uh, we are creating a front yard, which is gonna be essentially the courtyard for the neighborhood, uh, obviously belongs to the school, but we're, we're really talking about how uh, the school becomes part of the community. Uh, and one thing is, is equal to the other. Yeah, so it really becomes where Many times you might see the playground in the back of the school. Here it's going to be more front and center, more as a park. It, while it will be a controlled playground area, it'll have more of a park type feel because it is on the front of the building, kind of serving as a entrance, if you will, uh, or gateway uh, to the building itself. And here, uh, as we continue forward with the presentation, you'll see sprinkle some uh, reference images that uh, we are using as reference to, to craft uh, the building moving forward. And so what these images really speak about is uh, you know, that transparency, the scale is appropriate for, for kids, is not something overwhelming. Uh, you know, the, the use of vegetation, to soften uh, kind of the interaction between uh, the, the new school and the community. Those are things that are important to us and that we will certainly make sure uh, to implement in the project. Uh, here, uh, just in terms of floor plan and how it really works, like I mentioned briefly uh, a little earlier, uh, the classrooms are arranged in a um, wing fashion uh, where we have uh, the little ones on the first floor, 
so they don't have to really uh, use the stairs uh, just for for convenience and safety. Also, on the first floor, we have the admin the admin block, and tying everything together is the library. So, like I said, the library is really the heart of the school and really the heart of the community, uh, with plenty of options uh, to to enjoy the outdoors, both on the east side as well as on the uh, west side. And you'll notice classrooms will have natural light, uh, both uh, north and south. And then uh, the gym and shelter is centrally located to the overall campus. Uh, so it will be convenient for uh, kids and staff to use it. And then phase two uh, includes, like I said, the art and the music and kitchen and dining. Uh, then again, another reference for uh, architecture that talks about uh, scale and some materials and textures, and always with the notion of providing uh, decent size uh, glazed uh, treatments for enjoyment of uh, natural light and views out. Again, this is a an idea of, of uh, materials that could be used, again, talking about texture and scale, and again, always a reference to the outdoors, bringing lighting, views, uh, trees, and everything else. And that, that corridor that we were showing that was connecting, if you will, the academic building to the dining room that has that long connecting corridor, you can begin to start to imagine possibilities of what that corridor might look like, or you might have academic space uh, classrooms on the right and then this glazing on the left that gets you connection to the outdoors yeah uh, we like this image only because the architecture becomes almost uh, part of the daily use of the building and so uh, we'll be uh, careful to look for those opportunities where we create you know, little nooks for the kids to uh, come around and read or uh, do group work uh, and also the opportunity to go out and have uh, learning opportunities outside. This is another interesting room that, that we may take as a reference for the makerspace, for instance, uh, which will be located on, on the second floor. It has an uh, open floor plan where uh, you know, the kids can uh, come around and, and collaborate to one another. Uh, safety and security for highly uh, visible spaces. So very little is blocked. I can see out, right? And, and I can see into the room. And so that's just another thing that we always keep in mind. It's almost like a, a lab for kids, if you will. Yeah. And now looking, looking at the second floor, essentially the second level only stays within phase one of the building. Uh, everything else is just one story. Uh, and so it's essentially just classrooms on the second floor. And again, we have that uh, interactive lab uh, right, right here, uh, kind of centrally located and it'll have direct views down to the library, which is downstairs. So that becomes, if you can imagine it, a one, one uh, kind of double height space uh, with uh, high, high interaction uh, between low and high uh, second level. This is another uh, one of those uh, hallways or spaces that feel like a hallway um, that can start resembling our, our building, uh, you know, looking for opportunities to showcase art. This could be art, uh, you know, that is made by the kids or maybe it's an artist from the community that come, uh, could come in and, and create an art for us. Uh, but again, you know, natural, try to use mater materials that resemble natural uh, elements, the warmth of the materials, uh, the highly textured, uh, friendly materials. And also supports the idea of learning kind of anytime, anywhere that the hallway is not just necessarily a place to move from point A to point B, but it's a 
place where that learning extends beyond the classroom. Just an idea of uh, how those uh, maybe spaces in between inside and outside can be used. We will certainly have something similar on the west side of the cafeteria, looking out uh, a small porch where you know kids can uh, enjoy lunch or study or do homework together. Here's just an exploded view of the program we talked about. Is uh, the, I think the design offers a very simple layout, uh, kind of easy to get oriented inside and outside. And, and we believe that's going to be helpful for uh, uh, the students as well as uh, teachers and staff. Once, once again, that, that, that communion between, you know, uh, greenery on the outside and, and spaces inside, we, we think that's uh, important. And possibly uh, the ability to actually open it up uh, of a real physical connection of the learning on the inside uh, to uh, uh, lab space on the outside, if you will. And uh, so these, these are some examples also of how, you know, we're thinking about safety and security and we know uh, the building is going to need uh, fencing in certain locations. And we like to think uh, about fencing not being uh, an element that rejects uh, the community, but rather uh, fencing as an element that is almost artistic, right? That is inviting, that is something intriguing. Maybe it's even an opportunity for learning, right? To have a conversation, uh, something that is that is beautiful, something that could be just utilitarian, but is not. And so we'll, we'll be looking for those opportunities. Here's an example where uh, this school is dealing with with a complicated site that has some uh, some drop, just like ours does. And so, how can we how can we start using those challenges as opportunities for uh, really uh, the enjoyment of of the kids using the school and the community? And then the, uh, some ideas about uh, how interior spaces in this case is a library how even though it's inside the building it really feels like it belongs or it brings the outside in i mean you see uh, plenty of glass not not exaggerated but enough where you can feel connected to the outdoors plenty of light coming in uh, and so this is this is a hope and and a goal of us uh, to uh, to make happen in your uh, your building, and I think it also offers this the idea of how the library could connect both the upper grades and the lower grades together. That it's not just a library; it's downstairs, but it's a library that's open, can easily connected for everyone. This is a building section, uh, conceptually speaking, and uh, the. The main, the main thing we wanted to show here is just how the building, uh, as is cut, right? Uh, there are opportunities kind of everywhere to bring light and views into the building. So we have uh, windows at the perimeter of the, of the building, but we also find opportunities kind of uh, back and forth or east and west to bring light uh, kind of on the other side and also potentially opportunities to bring light through clerestory uh, windows. And here is a sketch of what we are really uh, trying, to, trying to convey here. Uh, we will, uh, for the most part, the volumes that, that have, uh, that hold the classrooms they're going to be mostly uh, tailored in brick. They will have windows 
uh, certainly smaller windows than the bigger circulation spaces. And so this is just to kind of start uh, thinking about uh, the material qualities of the building. This is the porch that is covered, but it's really on uh, exterior space. And start thinking about the opportunities of those kinds of spaces uh, uh, for you guys. This is an example of, of maybe the look and feel of, of that volume, right? Look, looking out, there's a porch covered uh, and join the, the views to the west. Uh, fairly, fairly glassy on the south side. And what that experience might be from the street level on the west side, looking up that hill uh, to that building. Yeah. Again, maybe this is, this is a, a view potentially uh, that could be achieved within the cafeteria, looking west on your side. You you have uh, you know tables and chairs, and certainly those views to the greenery on the west side. And then uh, even extending that to the, we've got a um, outdoor uh, kind of garden space, if you will, just a, a green space. It was off of the uh, art room that you can start to open up to that space as well as out to that playground area that are built or that outdoor learning even between the academic areas that just connect nature uh, to the indoors. As you can as you can tell, most of these reference uh, images and buildings to us you know, they really speak about scale and, you know, nature and rich materials. Um, and so the, we think those are good, good references for your project. And so in, in summary, the, uh, the overall building offers a simple, simple uh, layout that offers clear orientation. That's always a good thing. Uh, we are crafting your building with a library in mind as the center of the school, the hearth, if you will. Um, not only the library, but kind of every single space in the new facility will have views and connection to the outdoors. Uh, we are great advocates for natural light um, and views, obviously. And then as we're dealing with dealing with the site, uh, we're going to be relying on, like, like I showed you earlier, on fencing uh, that is not only protective but beautiful, uh, as well as um, retaining walls that will be tailored just to respond to the site uh, specifically. And like Terry said earlier, the front yard really becomes a park to the community. And so that, uh, we think that's, that's uh, fairly important. And so I guess we'd like to open for comments or questions. Yeah, turn back to Ms. Bell. Thank you so much. What a wonderful presentation and what a beautiful concept for this community. I, I actually got a little chills when I thought about looking up that hill and seeing all that glass, like, wow. Um, we have a number of comments. Our Facebook community has really been active and engaged in this particular process and making their comments. Now, if you're joining us on the um, <clears throat> directly in Excuse me, if you join us directly in our meeting um, via Zoom, please feel free to raise your hand. If you see there's a reaction setting, you can raise your hand and we'll call you to call, go off mute. And at that time, you can make any questions or make any comments, or you can simply put them in the chat. But let me start with some of these comments from Facebook. Um, we have a comment. Thank you for putting this on Facebook Live. I love the way it notified me to join. Then they said the comment as a community member, I got my start in Dallas ISD 12 years ago teaching at Peabody. In architectural considerations, please preserve the nuclear fallout shelter below the auditorium as a relic of the Cold War history in Dallas ISD. What a great uh, piece of history there. Thank you. Um, please preserve any notices and signs around that shelter. 
So that's a note to the architects, find that shelter and make sure that we note that um, it was a nuclear fallout shelter at one time. What a great teaching opportunity for our kiddos <laughs> as well. And thank you, um, Trustee Mackey, if you would like to make any type of comments now before you actually um, leave, that'd be great. No, I'm excited. This looks like a phenomenal one. I definitely want to let the community be able to ask all the questions and I can take as many notes as I can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us this evening. We know that your your time is you're very busy right now. Um, and here's a question we have here: Is um, if if you could comment on whether this could be considered a, a, about the nuclear um, fallout shelter? Um, the other question is: Will the front of the school be restored to the original site? The cliff view and the drive up and walk up visible from the main intersection at Jefferson. In historic photos, the old entrance that made a huge visual impact. I'm going to stop and let you address that particular question. I see we have some things coming in our chat room as well. So my understanding is said is that the original entrance was had that view uh, mm -hmm. back to Jefferson. And while our the front door itself won't be uh, restored to that entrance, we are going to take advantage of that view from that intersection back up uh, to the school. So that, that dining space where that outdoor uh, area that Alex mm -hmm. spoke about is having that glass, that uh, view of both up to that building that'll have, uh, I think a lot of interest uh, where kids can be during, uh, during lunch, but also at night that can start to have a glow to it. Anytime mm -hmm. you have an activity or things going on so that as you look up to that uh, building, I think it's gonna really draw your not only your eye, but your interest up to the campus where you're gonna to wanna to see more of it. I, but and I think on the flip side is on the inside, I think it's gonna be really spectacular as that building starts to, to separate from that, uh, from the, uh, from the ground. Uh, and that 18 feet of drop, plus the kind of the height of the foundation, you're really gonna to start to be perched up uh, to have a really nice vantage point uh, over that uh, community to the west. Okay, fantastic. I, again, I could I could actually visibly visually see that. Now we do have a question, and Mr. Alfred, I think you may be best to answer this question. Um, this is again coming from Facebook. It's about preserving the auditorium, and I know the di the district has design standards. Um, this pr this proposal calls for a cafetorium, I believe. If you could kind of let the community know why there's not an auditorium in our elementary schools. Yeah, because in some of the 21st century schools, we're, we're, we noticed the model was to go more toward a cafetorium space at the elementary level, especially we saw it was uh, more efficient. And we're designing uh, 14 of these new schools and just to be consistent with our technical design guidelines and where we saw the trends going is why we decided to do the, the cafetorium. Uh, you think of something like, uh, you know, American Airlines Center, you know, downtown, you know, where you hold your big concert. So I think you can create some nice cafetorium spaces, uh, but that's overall what, what led to that decision. And some campuses, they have the option of cafetoriums or, or um, gymatoriums, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Some have selected to go with the gymatoriums, uh, but I'm, I'm seeing more of these uh, cafetoria models. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And if anyone is um, anyone who wants to follow that and see what we're doing, if you go to our dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2015, that's B-O-N-D 2015, we're updating that site to show pictures of a couple of our new campuses just opened on both Jill Stone and H.S. Thompson. Um, I believe Jill Stone features a gymatorium while H.S. Thompson features a cafetorium. So you can kind of get a sense of how that looks and feels. And certainly this would be designed for this particular community and this particular school, but it'll kind of give you a way to, to compare and see what we're talking about, actually in action. Um, we have a comment in the chat room. Will the children remain on site during the demo process or be rerouted to area schools? When would the construction be projected to begin and end? I think that's on you as well, Mr. Alfred. Yeah, I'll take that as well. Uh, right now, this current plan is showing that we will stay on campus, but I am actively looking for possible locations if we do decide to relocate. And we'll come back to this community and uh, talk about those options. But 
uh, as the architect is showing, uh, the current plan is to stay here. Uh, construction, right now they're in the design phase. Uh, we plan on bidding this project uh, in the fall, uh, which means construction would not actually start uh, probably January around this time next year. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Ms. Flores, Claudia Flores, do you have your hand raised? I see something going on with your screen. Would you like to ask a question at this time? Okay, Ms. Flores? Okay, I guess not. And we, again, if you're joining us in, um, if you're joining us via Facebook, please be sure to ask any questions, make your comments, suggestions, um, or just give us thumbs up. I know we have a couple of hearts going on here. So just let us know how you're feeling about the new uh, Peabody Elementary School. And if you're on the Zoom call, please feel free. You can go off mute at this time and ask any questions, or you can place them in the chat room. Ms. Bell, I think Mr. Stephen Holloman has his hand up. Is that okay, correct? Mr. Mr. Holloman, is your hand up? Okay, yes, sir. Go ahead and go off mute. Thank okay. you. Okay, uh, I... Uh... I went to Peabody in the early to mid-60s, mm -hmm. so I'm full of Peabody tradition, and I love Peabody. Uh, I just retired from 42 years of teaching in Owasso, Oklahoma, and I've I've been around construction of two new elementary schools. Well, a lot of them, but two really modern ones. And uh, just to comment on the cafetorium, mm -hmm. the... Uh, I mean, I love the auditorium, but uh, again, speaking again from an old timer, to me, the cafetorium makes sense because, uh, you know, and I can send pictures to Miss Rogers Hall, you know, uh, about it, but it has a really nice stage mm -hmm. on it and get all the kids in there at one time. And also, now I don't know about your design, but they have the music room in the back of that so they can just go right up ramps and come out on the stage if they're going to do musicals or anything like that. But uh, again, it's it's different up here. We The, the two new elementaries we had, they use pods and, uh, you know, where they have the grade levels in different pods and four classrooms in a pod in a group area. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a whole lot of Things. I was, I was one thing I was going to ask if uh, if Miss Rogers Hall got the input that she wanted us on and from her teachers on how the layout's going to be and and what they wanted specific. That's that's my question, I guess, right now. Okay, thank you so much for joining us and yay, Peabody proud. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Miss um, Rogers Hall. Yes, ma'am. First of all, Mr. Holliman, thank you so much for continuing to give back to our school. I know you're very involved and still giving back, and we certainly appreciate it. And I will say that the staff and I met, and we did put together a wish list. And based on the things that I'm hearing, most of those things um, I can hear are coming through with the design plan. Um, some of the other things are... Um, We'll have to talk about, I guess, at a later time, just about storage areas. I know that's not going to be part of the big picture. It's just those those details type of things that we, uh, I guess, we'll talk about in the future. But um, looking at this design plan, I I am happy. <laughs> I think it's awesome. I'm super excited. And I was going to share that as part of our next steps that for the architects, you know, this is really about the big movements of the building, the skin for the community with the neighborhood. We'll see in the parking and circulation and some big organization. But the very next step, if we've got you guys buy in on this concept is to meet with the teachers and the principals and smaller groups to talk about those individual spaces within the building and, you know, how they see themselves in it. And the architect would you know do that over the next several months before we bid it. So. I have one more for right yes, now. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Can can you make can you make the new gym a safe room? That's the big thing up mm -hmm. here now. So, and uh, you know, we can when you construct it, that's yeah. a safe room for for weather and anything else. 
I can let the architects, Tara and his team, talk about that. They, I did, they did mention that would be a storm shelter that is required by uh, the city of Dallas code requirements since 2015. Uh, so those are all storm shelters. Terry, do you want to add on to that? Yes, I, I, that was a, a, a great question and a comment, Mr. Holloman. I, the, the gymnasium is uh, there's different ways that you can do that shelter. What we found is going to be the best solution uh, for this particular project and kind of the, to make the phasing work is that the gymnasium will be that shelter uh, that will be able to accommodate um, uh, both uh, staff, students, and visitors that might be uh, on campus. We hope that never is the case, but uh, if so, it's appropriately sized uh, to be able to accommodate the campus as a whole. And the great thing is in the design is because of that gymnasium and the functionality of it, the storm shelter doesn't take away from the functionality of that gym. You're able to get good use of that, that gym because it doesn't tend to have a lot of windows. And so it's a great opportunity to use that for dual function um, as that safe room. Anything to add to that, Alex? Okay. Great. So if anyone else would <clears throat> like to make a comment, a question, concern, and I guess the real question is, it sounds like we know that um, Principal Rogers Hall is excited about the design. Mr. Holman is Peabody proud and he's, he's, he's bought into the cafetorium design. Um, how do, and we have a ton of thumbs up and hearts on our comments in Facebook Live. So I'm guessing that we can say to the architect, good job. And there's community buy-in regarding this particular concept and design. It's a great job, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and we do look forward uh, to our, our continue uh, meetings with uh, Ms. Rogers Hall. We're actually getting close to the point where we are ready uh, to start getting you and your staff uh, engaged uh, further. So uh, hopefully more excitement to come. Fantastic. Um, with that being said, we want to go ahead. We're it seems like we're not getting any more comments and questions coming through right now. And we want to, of course, um, value your time and respect the time of everyone who joined us today. So, Mr. Alfred, if you want to provide next steps, you've kind of alluded to it before. If you want to kind of provide next steps from this point forward. Yeah, yeah like I said, the next steps, uh, I'm going to ask the architect to start meeting with Ms. Rogers and our team in smaller groups so that we can talk about the academics and some of the fine art spaces. Uh, and and you know, support spaces, storage is also <laughs> always a big uh, item I hear from our principals. So uh, I, we definitely need plenty of that. <clears throat> so uh, like I said, the architect are in the uh, early schematic design phase. There's about three or four more phases to go through before we did it. Uh, but we will come back with uh, a presentation, you know, now that we have you guys buy in on, you know, kind of the layout here and what we're doing. Uh, just to present to you guys, you know, the, the uh, more polished renderings, uh, and that will be put up on our website as well, uh, Bond 2020, and uh, we're looking forward to, to these next steps. So back to you, Ms. Bell. Fantastic. And again, if you know someone who was unable to attend tonight's meeting, or you just want to review what was uh, what was um, shared tonight, you can visit our website at dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020. There's a project site there for the new George Peabody as well. And, and on our bond 2020 meetings, if you go to that particular tab, you will see the, this meeting has been recorded and will be shared there in both English and Spanish, and the presentation will be uploaded there as well. So feel free to visit that site to keep up to date on this and other Bond 2020 projects. Um, with that being said, um, Principal Rogers Hall, it goes to you for closing remarks. Okay, well, uh, thank, thank you to everyone. I see several members of our Peabody family here. And I'm sure there's more out there in, on Facebook. Um, I will continue to um, look out for emails for the next steps. I, I will not bother you this time, Ms. Bell. I will wait patiently for the next steps. I know I sent you a couple of emails, just making sure I wasn't missing anything. So, um, anyway, super excited. Thank you, everyone, for being here. It's going to be an awesome, awesome ride. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, Peabody community, community I want you to know, 
you have a principal who is advocating for her campus actively and aggressively, and she's making sure that she's staying in the loop so she can keep you guys in the loop about all the great changes and things that are going on um, under this particular bond program. So kudos you and reach out anytime, Ms. Rogers. That's why I'm here. I'm checking one more time to make sure there's not anything else coming from the um, there's a couple of suggestions here on Facebook. I'm going to go ahead and share them <clears throat> that we're um, making sure that the limestone, there's a, there's a suggestion about making sure that we use some of the limestone in the retaining walls um, because it's important um, typography to the to um, Oak Cliff and to that particular community. And just wanted to make sure, and, and the question here was about, there was a question about the sizing of furniture. So I do want to make sure that we do share that we do use age appropriate furnishings and those, those um, furniture selections will actually be um, done in conjunction with the um, school itself in making those furniture selections. And so everyone will know when we build new schools, everything in the building is brand new. So, yes, I see Ms. Wagner is, is, is clapping her hands. My times we understand that every single solitary thing is custom to that particular school. It's brand new. And our educators actually have a role in helping to input exactly what furnishings. Oh, there would not be a, our pre would not be outfitted with the same size furnishing as our fifth and sixth grade classrooms. But thank you for asking that question on Facebook. And again, um, please feel free to continue to contact us and follow this and other projects. Um, we're excited to be able to have transparency during this bond program. And you can keep track again, that website is dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020. With that being said, I thank everyone for joining us and participating both on the Zoom call and on Facebook tonight. And we wish everyone a very happy evening. Goodbye.